Salutations, everybody. This is Igbar Von Squid making a splash, and uh, with the release of Oculus Quest, it is now time for us to optimize our avatars so that we show up for quest users. I have too many polygons and too many materials for the quest. Whatever am I going to do? I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna use the secret Igbar technique. Uh, and then you're gonna disable <laughs> the camera and the directional light because you don't need either of those things. And you're gonna just remove the skybox because you don't need that. And the s color light, uh, crank that up. Make that as bright as possible. Print screen. I'm part of the too poor to afford Photoshop gang, so I'm just gonna uh, put this into GIMP. Uh, and then same thing, print screen. And then just uh, paste this onto your new layer. Uh, so to make the uh, life easier, we're gonna use the crop tool here. So now we're gonna uh, crop it again. Uh, so now we're actually gonna uh, resize the canvas to accommodate both textures. So uh, we're gonna grab that back layer again, and we're just gonna flip that over to the other side. So here we are on a waifu 2x, where we're gonna upscale the resolution of the picture so that it doesn't look like crap. And look at that, we got a nice kind of HD, kind of not good enough looking textures. So go ahead and uh, save that. So here we are in my Blender file uh, with my original character, and I'm just gonna quickly prove how absolutely impossible it is to uh, get a model within 5,000 polygons for the quest uh, because it's absolutely impossible. You can't make the model look good. The model actually looks kind of good. Uh, so here you can see that it's absolutely impossible. Uh, so to get started, uh, I'm just gonna create a plane. So here I've got my plane and we're gonna uh, UV unwrap that and go over to UV editing. And here I've popped in my lovely texture that we just made. Uh, so here we're gonna assign it a material and make that uh, shadeless so I can actually see what the hell I'm doing and uh, give it my lovely texture. Edge, uh, move that like in the center. There we go. Go ham in edit mode with edge selection and just kind of get this correct. Though for whatever reason this leg does not line up but everything else does so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna call that good enough. Uh, so now that we have this lined up perfectly, uh, we're going to completely delete the body because we don't need that in our lives. So go ahead and go to uh, Tools, called the Knife Tool. Uh, you can also press K to bring it up. And what this does is you can select some points and it will just uh, make an edge there. So uh, just go around your model and uh, cut, cut it out. Uh, so important to note, the uh, Knife Tool screws up quite a lot. So it's a good idea to not actually cut out your model completely in one go. Uh, so for the most part, the model is cut out. Uh, you could you could really go like the extra mile and like cut out the hair parts too, uh, but I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna do that. So all these hair bones you don't need, and most of the finger bones you don't need. But I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so when it comes to the fingers, uh, you have to do a very special thing. So you need to keep. I'm gonna actually select all these just to be lazy. Uh, the ones you need to keep are this thumb bone. Uh, the pointer finger and the middle finger, but you can you can delete the rest of those boys. So what is this? Left wrist, uh, thumb, index finger, middle finger. Uh, you need to keep those. Uh, so the reason you need these fingers is because for some whatever reason, it's probably something with the humanoid IK stuff that VRChat uses, the model can't crouch or go prone unless it has a thumb, a pointer finger, and a middle finger. The important point I was trying to make is that the middle finger needs to be in front of the pointer finger, and usually by like a lot. Uh, we're not going to weight this to anything at all, uh, so don't worry about it. Just just kind of like put it up here and uh, symmetrize that to the other side. Yeah, it's about as much effort as I bother to do. So now you'll see that uh, hands on the other fingers on the other side should be right in the same position. Yeah. Uh, so now comes the fun part where you now have to split up the model in such a way that you can actually weight paint it. Uh, some cases this is easy, other cases uh, this is not easy. Uh, so um, just to get you started, I like to start with the head. Just uh, start here, make like a cut uh, here, and just go across, and bam. So now you got now you got a face for your head. And then what you would do is you come over to here, not modifiers. Uh, so now you got vertex groups. I'm gonna call this a head, and just say a sign. And then I just realized that this is not actually under the armature. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna uh, fix the head. Uh, modifier, armature, armature, there we go. So now if you go to the pose mode, wait, sorry, pose mode, and you grab this, your head actually moves. 
So you're one step closer to achieving your dreams. So now with all of those assigned, uh, it's important to go into pose mode and just grab like the hips. And just do a rotation to see that everything has correctly weight painted. Uh, if something was fucked up, it would stay in place. But it uh, looks like everything's moving just a-okay. But it's also important to check how it actually behaves. So, you know, hips. I'll bend this. It's good to turn it to the side a little bit. Ooh, <laughs> that's a glorious movement there. <laughs> And that just keep just keep rotating parts to make sure it works. <laughs> oh, that looks that looks great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's exactly how I want this to move. <laughs> uh, so you can also go the extra step to check the weight painting of ind individual parts to make sure it looks okay. Because sometimes when you have face when you do weight painting this way and you're just like slapping it on faces willy nilly like that. Uh, then it'll look like look look at this right it, the neck also includes part of the head Which isn't which isn't really ideal So what I would do to fix that is I would select this uh, go to neck and assign it as zero And this way when I actually go back into weight paint You'll see that the neck now is only the neck. It does not include head. This is actually despite what this uh, Picture is it is actually not double-sided uh, the back is actually invisible, and you can see that by pressing N and looking for, like, render backside. I don't- I don't know where the hell that is. Oh, it's actually this, back face culling, so disable that, and now you'll see that how it will actually look is that it's invisible from the back. So, how do we fix that? Uh, well, that's really, really easy. So grab your plane, and do Shift D, and then left click. Now, what you have is you have a second mesh, uh, like the first mesh. Now, you're gonna need to flip it around somehow, so... Oh man, look at that. <laughs> look at that, look at that thick boy outline! Mm. And so put it into edit mode, select everything, press W, and then just do uh, flip normals. So now, now it's actually properly double-sided, but you'll see that the front texture is the same as the back texture. But once again, easy, easy fix, UV editing. Uh, and then grab this, and I'm gonna hold control so that it snaps, and then BAM! Look at that! It is now, like, perfectly the same. You just press, uh, was it, like, Shift-J? No, Control-J. There we go. And now it's one mesh, and for your convenience sake, call this body. And now, uh, you're done. It's only 306 tries. <laughs> so I was about to say export the model, but I realized that, uh, it's not very immersive because we have no mouth tracking, but you know me, I have a solution to every problem. Uh, so here's my solution. I've, uh, made a mouth out of the eye texture. Uh, so, we're just gonna, let's see, I guess combine this into the body, and then, you know, it's only one face, so it should be easy to work with. Uh, I guess now we have to, shape keys, basis, so there, here's basis, uh, you can't see that it has a mouth in any way, uh, so now we're gonna make uh, the ah uh, shape key, by resizing it big, and shoving it forward. So with the ah uh, shape key made, I like to just do... New shape for mix. And I like to do that twice. So make the second one O, and make the third one Ch. So put this to zero, and now we can make O pretty easily by grabbing it and uh, shrinking it to maybe like an O. And then for Ch, I usually like to like widen it a little bit and then kind of squish it down so it's like shh, 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 zooms, and then ah, O, and Ch. Great. And then look at that. You got all your nice uh, things that you need. Uh, so here I am back in Unity, I've got my model now imported, so as you would with any other model, uh, you change it humanoid, configure, do the save, uh, sometimes chest will be unbound, this time it's not. Doing it this way always seems to make it so that the fingers will never automatically bind, so you always gotta set these manually, and you pray to god that it does not tell you that it's not T-Pose. And this time I've escaped that fate. Middle right. What is the pro what is the problem? These are these, it's exactly the it's it's exactly the same. Okay, don't worry, we can uh, we can fix this. It's saying it's the wrist that's the problem. Uh, boom. Uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. You just drop that bad boy in there. Now, if you want the model to be quest compatible, you need to make it uh, VR chat mobile. And any of these will really work. Tune lit is what I'm going to use. 
And I'll oh, just drag in my texture and bam. Uh, so normally I'd say just like copy component and then paste this on so that it already has the Visim set up. But uh, I did not actually do Visims on that avatar. <laughs> so uh, the important thing, I guess, is that it still has the, uh, the view position the same. So I guess I guess that's kind of a win. Uh, so now that I have those shape keys out of the way, we can just do... Uh, I'm going to do this as a new model, I actually test it out first. So, build and publish. So, I now have this avatar properly uploaded on my account. I have a nice blueprint ID here for my avatar. But the problem is that I uploaded as a PC avatar, not as a quest avatar. So, I need to make a PC project, or sorry, a quest project, and then port this in. I'm gonna make a prefab, uh, call this, uh, I'll have the prefab made, and just drag and drop that in. So, now here comes the annoying part. Uh, so, you're gonna export package, and it's gonna have like everything highlighted. Uh, I know that I only need these like three things. So, just go down a list and just uncheck uncheck absolutely everything because you don't need any of this other stuff to make a package so i have everything i don't need unchecked uh export so now my quest project open you can tell it's a quest project because build settings android uh, i had to download the android sdk uh you can check the vr chat documentation on how to do that and i'm just going to drag and drop in my package okay package is in drag and drop in the scene and uh voila it is now on a quest project so do the same thing build control panel build and publish and just republish it and remember to publish it on the exact same avatar id that you had before so way back at the beginning of this video i was talking about this avatar in particular this 3d version how you can optimize it for quest so if you wanted it so that you should it was this avatar in pc and then this avatar on quest all you would do is you would go to the pipeline manager and do detach and then you'd pull up the ID for this one, and you'd use that instead. And then what that would do is that if someone was on PC, they would see this one, but if they're on Quest, they'd see this one. But uh, I can't really turn down the opportunity to just look like this one all the time, so I'm not gonna do what I just told you to do. So here I am in VRChat, and why is my mouth... Oh, I forgot to weight paint my mouth to my head. <laughs> that might be a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Okay, it's fixed. All right. So now that this is all good and ready, it is time to greet the quest populace. Oh, wow. That's... I see someone clearly put a lot of effort into that skin. Yeah, I did. I put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> it's 2D. It's amazing. The, like, the <laughs> Earth is flat. Just like the Earth. If you, think, if you actually think the Earth is flat, you're retarded. The Earth is obviously a donut. That is such a creepy girl. What are you talking about? Wait. It's cardboard. Oh. Paper. <laughs> I don't see it. Oh god. Wait, You're so big. big. Oh god. Wait, you I'm know, sorry, I'm very new I to VR. I talk like a lot, right? Come on. Oh, okay. You do know that. Don't worry, what is it? Everybody open the door. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at this. I talk oh, quite a lot, and I do wish I was everyone who's talking to them. So, yes! Cuts, probably. No! Oh, please don't. Oh, Ma'am, are you okay? Hey, Frosty. No! <laughs> it's okay, that happens to the best of us. Oh, God. Thank you! Oh, shit. Is that your quest ready? Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hold on, hold on, I got you. Quest, quest I got you, gamer. I have got you, gamer. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. See this avatar? See this avatar? Oh yeah, let's go. Oh Quest yeah, oh, gamers. oh yeah. Shit. Oh, you got the visemes though, man. That's next level though. <laughs> that nice. Speaking my language.